Good morning or afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Okaden Research Channel. Long time I haven't posted a video, so this one is a double. We're going to talk today about the lead seal. Uh, so interesting that lead seal, and uh, I think I've got answers for you. And we're also gonna uh, study the number three thousand three hundred thirty-three. Following dot to dots video about it, uh, I've got something to communicate about that number that appears again in those scales. Interesting. So let's go. <clears throat> the lead seal. I would not have suspected that someday in my life I would end up knowing that much about lead seals. Jeez. Um, uh, to be true, uh, I did just like everybody a couple of days ago when I discovered that on the, on the show. I went to Google, I went to all kinds of web pages, and I spent hours reviewing, trying to spot a seal that would look like this one. And uh, um, not brilliant thing came out. Yes, there are tons of seals, and they date from uh, and range from 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 tons of dates. <clears throat> so then, uh, two days ago, I thought to myself, "Well, we are hundreds of crazy enough people." to spend hundreds of hours on Oak Island and searching crazy things. Maybe there's people who spend hundred hours studying lead seals and there are people so passionate about it, they know everything about it. So instead of me searching, let them do the search. And that worked. Um, I found out a Facebook group named the Bag Seal Identifier and it rebounds and it works uh, in conjunction with the Peace Heavens project. Um, the bag seal identifier uh, features somebody named Stuart Elton, and I wish to thank him, as well as Kim Riccio and Jimmy Dinger, who within a couple of hours um, com communicated to their whole network all the way to Russia, the Peace Heavens project uh, dedicates its work on, on lead seals from the Orthodox Church from Russia, which supposedly used a lot. And in a matter of hours, a whole lot of people started uh, to look for answers to that seal uh, after I posted a very polite and, and, and request uh, explaining who I was, what we were doing, and, and if they could help us identify. I was so surprised. The whole artillery came up. So those guys are passionate, and they know a lot. Uh, Mr. Helton here wrote books about it. And they're, they're connected and, and they know what they're looking for in those seals. So they managed to provide answers. First of all, that's the seal as it appears on the show, right? Um, that, and, and the picture is not brilliant because it's, it's pretty worn out. The picture underneath originally is the picture dot to dot on his video um, came up with. It worked, it worked the lines and figured out that pattern. The people from the uh, group, uh, the uh, uh, specializing in, in the uh, lead seal from Facebook I contacted, very early added those two figures saying, well, we know it's not a cross, it's a four. And as explained on the show, it is the sign of cross those merchants would uh, perform. Sign of cross is here, and here it's it's most likely an F, and and the initials are F and E. We found through that group of uh, of, of researcher a very similar, very very similar pattern here, where you've got exactly the two cross at the bottom, the four at the top, and two initials side and side, and that uh, those dots in a circle around it, which are very similar to the ones we have. On our picture, we got a, a picture of the back. Uh, the size of this is uh, two centimeters. Uh, that's that's uh, three quarter of an inch, uh, roughly. So what do we have here? Um, <clears throat> now that we know what it is, and, and I'll, I'll detail more, uh, that uh, those people on the uh, group from Facebook explained me. Those were in used from 1459 to 1724, very precise dates, and we can mark two events that conduct to knowing that these were the dates those were in use. Um, the Maryland, Ar Maryland, in the USA, Maryland Archaeology uh, Foundation, 
um, believe the XX is either a mark of weight or a mark of length of cloth. Because I'll get back to what you would put them on in a second. Uh, this one was found in the UK in uh, Hertfordshire, and again two millimeter. But this is this is pretty much exactly what we have from the O'Cannon show. All right. <clears throat> so those the people on on those groups provide me several information, documents, snapshots to help me understand. One of them is this research book from, I, I can't remember when, but it's very thick and precise. And here again, on number 24, that's the pattern we've got on the uh, token. And what's very interesting is the description, the story tells around this particular pattern. In 15, sorry, in 1459, uh, the day before St. George, the king and the crown committed to care of Robert Thompson the duty of being a tokener. And he is to token and seal all cloth called Norwich cloth. I check on the net, it still exists, that Norwich cloth fabric with lead seals or token after he measured them. And, and basically, it was, it was a quality manager. He would check that any roll of cloth, woolen cloth, because uh, back in the days prior to 1400, that's what you would have cloth on. Cotton was not that used, obviously. And he was in charge of ISO 9000, uh, 9, if you wish. He was uh, in charge of stamping that those rolls were uh, correctly under the measure and quality of fabric. The story continues saying the Wallum weavers were obliged to bring a roll with the name of the craft. So that's the, the, that's the role of, Mr. of, of, of uh, workshop A, workshop B, and several marks uh, belonging to each trade but in which the goodness of Richmond's clothes might be known by his mark. And the measure would be certified by the token. Then 20 years later or 10 years later, they may evolve a bit. Uh, then uh, a statute made to ascertain the length and breadth, again, quality. Uh, the keeper of the leads, of the seals, sorry, the keeper of the lead seals were called Old Nagger, that's the name of the people who owned those seals and were allowed to certify for the king that whatever fabric was under what it claimed it was, length and material and everything. And they were ordered directly by the treasurer of England. That's very interesting. You'll note T and E, right? Treasurer of England. That rang a bell at one point. I'll get back to that. So that's another, that's a source, bibliothecary uh, um, university source that explained the pattern and where they come from and when and why they were created, those one in particular. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's carry on our journey. Another source coming from Jimmy Dinger on the, uh, that group on, on Facebook shows several, another uh, um, a research book about them. And I, I highlighted this one. These were called English wool staplers mark so that's what we're talking about and we're somewhere around that one in the middle uh there's no initials on the on the side but the four is on the right direction so we've got a, a several hints that lead us to um wool cloth trading activity where uh they would have to be a mark of quality of standardization uh between 1459 and 1725 Another one that was found by the uh, uh, Maryland archaeology who uh, did some research on some Maryland historical settlers area and dug out and found lots of seals. And part of them was this seal here, where we can see again the four at the top, the X and X at the bottom. There seems to be a C on the right here and something on the left. Well, they categorized it. This is number 10 at the bottom, 19 millimeter, three quarter of an inch. Um, TC, XX, TC are the initials, and XX is at the bottom. They believe that that's, that's, that society of archaeology who, who tend to think XX may be a weight, and in another document they say maybe the length of the clothes. So maybe that's the, 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 
the weight or the the weave or the the quality of the fabric they could be marked at double x it's not necessarily the um imprint of the workshop it could be a a value uh stamp uh saying this is worth that that's interesting isn't it um so none of those sources uh claim that all of them claim this is an english lead seal it's not from the netherlands not from france it's it's definitely from several sources come something coming from england and from the wool weaver or wool industry so why does it end up on oak island they explained in those books that the golden age of those fabric uh, manufacturer was when the pilgrims settled in the new continent in the usa and canada and of course the new world there was a lot of trading supporting those colonies imagine we would land on mars some on mars someday you would need a continuous um logistic and supply from earth to there the, to the new world so it would be kind of the same they would heavily support and there was two type of support there was the king uh, who had uh, um, definitely interest in supporting colonies activities either because he sent them there or because it was the flag so you would find some of those manufactured good with some of those stamps with royal stamps royal seals and you would find also private merchandise and priv private companies companies of india and things like that or private companies that would send and they would need also to mark uh, their clothes and etc so we uh, we've got two stories there it's either this this te person is uh, an, uh, an old old nagir who was named by the treasurer treasurer of great britain of, of england so it was some kind of high-ranking official that marked that um piece of cloth and then that got lost on the beach of oak island meaning that was something from the crowd and something institutional or it was just people's regular colony settlers activities on or near the island and it could be you know anything that where you need some clothes could be farmers and they order that from the uh, local outpost company and they receive that bag and it had a stamp and it's just something absolutely um, natural and no treasure linked so that we will never know because we can't trace that to be uh, yet part of the uh, the king the king uh, business or private business but it's very interesting that we found so many uh, clues in from different sources that point to the same direction voila that's um, that's what we got on that seal and it's definitely not Templar so conclusion Dates between 1459 and 1724. That's certified. Though that we know they were not in operation after 1724 because they were replaced by other technologies. It is English origin and it deals with the business of woolen cloth, trading, manufacturing, quality woolen cloth. Woolen cloth. Either from private merchants, we find sources that sometimes weavers themselves had theirs. I would believe that throughout time, as we saw originally. 1459, only one person was in charge of stamping everything. Then he delegated, 15 years later, in 65, he delegated and he created what we call all, all Nagir. And I guess as the time went by, it was like ISO 9000, you would subcontract the quality process up front at the manufacturing level. So more and more people could stamp officially because they were certified to use a lead seal in the name of. So... Uh, as we don't know what year this is precisely, we don't know if it was um, directly linked with the crowd and the uh, uh, treasurer of England, or it was way remote if you look later in time uh, as a subsequent number of people in, involved and more people involved in, in using those leads. So that we don't know. And the letters of the token, according to that group, are T and E. I thought treasurer of England. I thought this could be an early one that was stamped directly by Mr. Thompson who was named by the king to do that, by the treasurer of England, and it could have been their source. That would be, it's an er, mean it's an early one, and it's very valuable. Um, and the opposite, uh, I think the more later it is, uh, the less valuable it is, as, as everybody could stand that. So 
that would be very interesting to find the exact date. Definitely not Templar, and definitely prior to Money Pit Discovery, which is 1795. Voila, for this uh, this part, that was the, uh, the lead seal. Very interesting. I'm still on that group, and again, I congratulate and thank them. And uh, if needed, uh, and if I got more information from them, I will uh, make a new video if necessary. The second thing I wanted to talk about today